Hi everyone, I'm Madeline Harvey and thank you for joining me at MadelineHarvey.com. I got a really great question today that I wanted to share with you because I know this is something that might be on many of your minds. And that question is, how can I extend my range? It's a wonderful question, especially if you're a singer that really, really wants to experience a wide variety of musical stylings and musical choices. Um, today's music is super, super versatile. It exists with some really great dark, deep lows and some really wonderful free floating highs. So if you want to be able to do a little bit of both, we're going to talk about that today. But one thing that you want to keep in mind that we're going to experience range today. So if we ever experience a part of your range that does not feel comfortable for you, go ahead and drop out. It is all about feeling what feels really good to you, what supports you. Um, nothing should ever feel uncomfortable or bad to you. So take what resonates with you and then just leave the rest for now, okay? Uh, let's talk about range for a second. There are three coordinations that I wanna go over today. Forgive me if I talk very fast. I just wanna give you all three of these coordinations. But three of these coordinations must be in balance in order for you to experience an awesome range. One, relaxation, relaxation, relaxation. Two, resonance. And three, vocal cord coordination. I'm gonna give you some sounds to play with this. It's some really easy sounds without some elaborate vocal exercises, just simple sounds. That way you can get to experiencing some really great ways to find your range and the results that you want. So let's talk about relaxation. Number one, um, a lot of times singers will try to reach for a high note. So they'll go, ah! And what happens is the muscles in the tongue, the jaw, the throat, they'll all tense in order to reach for that high note. So we want to work around this by simply staying very, very, very still. We want to use a sigh to get up and over the, the place where that tension may occur and just gently move the sound forward. So we're just going to play with a simple sigh. We're going to go, ah. go ahead and try that. And imagine that your sound can get up and over the jaw and just into the headspace and out in front of you. This is really going to reprogram the body to associate release with a high sound. One more time. And stay focused on that one thing, which is how relaxed can you be? You can do a wide variety of pitches in this way. Let's go ahead and play with that now. We'll go. in those key areas, the muscles under the jaw, the larynx, and the tongue. If you can maintain absolute stillness in those areas while you sigh, you did a good job. You did a really good job. So that is relaxation. A simple sigh will do the trick. Number two is resonance. We want to play with resonance by using an NG sound. It's like we're saying the word song or sing. The back of the tongue is going to lift and touch the soft palate and the tip of the tongue is just going to stay rested against the bottom teeth. Mm. Mm. This is really going to focus your resonance into the nose space. You might feel a little pressure inside there, but why this exercise is so amazing is it removes a lot of the pressure from the neck and the throat by removing the mouth as a resonator. So we'll go, mm. go ahead and try that. If you feel pinching in the throat, like mm, go back, relax, and try the NG at a later time. Another thing that you can do once you have the NG really helping the resonance go up into the nose is go from an NG sigh to dropping the tongue like this. Mm, ah. The sigh will carry your sound forward by using a combination of resonances. One more time, I'll demonstrate. Mm -hmm. ah. Could you hear it split? One more time. Mm -hmm. ah. By keeping your sigh consistent, it's going to gradually blend both of those registers. So that is resonance, number two. Number three is vocal cord coordination. 
this is all, this is about if you experience a really uh, crazy break as your sound goes into a headier quality like this. Ah, if you experience that, the vocal cords are actually breaking apart on the top. And a good way to work with that is, this is gonna go ahead and really be crazy, but stay with me, is go ahead and laugh at a, at a higher pitch like this. I just feel the judgment coming. <laughs> but go ahead and give it a try. You're coordinating your vocal cords really rapidly at a, high, um, at a high pitch, which is going to really remove a lot of the squeeze. So we're removing ah, by going ah. We have a better sound that way. So just go ahead and laugh with me. Ah. Try a lower tone. And just for fun, go ahead and try the highest tone that you can make while staying relaxed. <laughs> Good job. If you can try the laugh, then you can do what I just did and laugh and then coordinate. Laugh and then coordinate. This is a wonderful way to train your vocal cords how to coordinate higher pitches without that squeeze. So let's review. Number one, we have relaxation. A simple sigh will do the trick, but stay with it. That's, you're gonna get wonderful results from a sigh. Number two is the NG to help the resonance go up into the nose. You can do the NG into the ah to find a nice split resonance. And number three is vocal cord coordination by laugh, that crazy laugh up on the top and then coordinating the sound. Practice all three of these as separate ideas to really give your body a nice chance of accepting it as a new habit. When you feel you have that down cold, then move on to the next. You're creating a sense of muscle memory with all three so that when you put the three together, you'll have an awesome, awesome range. Feel free to send me any questions that you have. If you want me to answer a specific question that you have in a blog article, send it my way. I'd love to hear from you at madelineharvey.com. Also feel free to subscribe. I'm constantly putting new content up. Thank you so much for joining me today and I can't wait to see you again soon. Bye-bye.